going on everybody? It's Ninja Drunk FX. The video I'm making today is Goku versus Superman. Who I think would win and why. Now, the reason I po made this video is because I always have to explain myself over and over to random people as to why I don't always trust screw tax research now i want to first state that i love the work you guys do i think that the show you do is amazing i just wish sometimes you guys would get maybe second opinions or other people that are more knowledgeable in that area that you're trying to research let's start first with uh goku's real strength you guys base it on that 40 ton thing with his arm locked in that was filler crap okay it was garbage or if you want to say it is or isn't, the writer itself doesn't realize what the hell he's doing. I'm going to show you the most strongest strength feat that Goku has in fact done. First, let's start with him and his son testing this new sword. First, he's just throwing a boulder. Okay, a boulder ain't shit, right? Boom. Cuts it in half. That's cool. We're going to go ahead and fast forward to about right here. Now, listen to this statement. I'm going to share with you guys some true feats. Ready? Son, he's ready for me. Here. Uh -huh. They're testing the sword of how strong it is. This is like an eight. And a little less mass. So more density, less mass. So this is the most dense uh -huh. thing that's gonna appear. Boom! Alright. Here, Goku, catch. Alright, now watch how he handles this block. And remember, he's in base form right now for the record. No problem. That is the hardest known metal in the universe. It's called Kachin. Right there, you see that? Tink, tink. He did that with one hand. He held up the heaviest metal and did tink, tink with one hand. Now I'm going to show you guys what the heaviest metal that we know is. All right? One teaspoon of the heaviest metal known to man in our universe weighs literally a teaspoon, okay? That would be like, you guys know what a teaspoon is, okay? I shouldn't even have to show you a picture of it. It literally weighs as much as Mount Giza, okay? If you guys don't know what Mount Giza is on our planet, go ahead and look it up. I did the math for you guys right here. Right here. Here's how much roughly that the damn plant or uh, Mount Giza weighs. I did the math, which comes out to 23 million tons, okay? So one itty-bitty teaspoon would weigh as much as 23 tons. And you saw that block. That block is easily 9 by 9 feet by the way you guys can obviously size it up and, and, and comment below what you guys really think this uh, the size is based on his height and everything but i'm just throwing it out there now how much then tons would he be able to lift and remember he's in base form so when he goes super saiyan he gets times 50 that strength feet right there okay why didn't screw attack use this information he clearly did it and proved it so that tells me no, it does. It doesn't work. Like they should have used this, not what uh, the other garbage that they did. Goku maybe was tired or something with those forty tons. He clearly was training that whole time before they even showed up. So he clearly was just out of gas. Maybe I don't know. The next thing we're gonna go on is gonna be the simple formula they used for his speed going around Snake Way. Oh, it took him blah 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 to go. No, stop, stop, stop. Okay, first off, let's take. A, a smarter look on it. Snake Way is season one of Dragon Ball Z, okay? Th there's been a ton of seasons beyond Dragon Ball Z. I'm going to share with you the second season, which still is still, I'm still giving you a slower, way slower version of Goku than he's not even being respectfully shown. Just to show you what I mean about their research. It's been proven. When he landed on Planet Namek in season two, to take on Frieza, or actually Captain Ginyu, he ran half around the planet and literally it was one or two seconds. Planet Namek is roughly the same size as planet Earth. I googled the simple formula, how many miles around the Earth? So if you did a lap around the Earth, this is how many miles it would be. 196.9 million miles, okay? That's how long it takes to go. So we cut that in half. Right, because he ran half around the Earth. He was able to do that in two, or like one or two seconds. This minimally should have been the speed that they used. But I can tell you, he's done way more impressive shit since then. Once again, Snake Wave formula, very bad idea to use. Okay, it just doesn't make any sense at all. 
Now, I'm going to show you Superman's feats. They said, oh, what's half of infinity in, in fuck infinity, blah, blah, blah. What's No, first off, the Book of Infinity does not have infinite weight, okay? It actually, in fact, does have a weight. I actually did my research myself. I posted this on a friend's channel. And I'm just going to kind of quote my. I'm going to read more what I wrote or personally myself because it, this is really what Superman's strength technically would be based on what Screw Attack was representing. See, the, once again, like I said, they really should have confirmed this information, which they didn't. So I put the book isn't infinite. It is a compilation of every book ever made known to man, which is a fact. You can read the damn comics if you guys don't believe me. So according to Google, I did, I Google searched how many books are in the world. There's 130 million books made. So, and remember, there's 52 universes in DC. So let's just say that book of infinite pages gets all 52 universes. I don't know if it does or doesn't, but I'm giving him the best strength feats he could possibly have. So, Google weight of the books and 1.15 uh, uh, pound 15 ounces. So I deliberately made every book the heaviest it possibly could be, which 1.5 pounds is way heavier. So this is what you would get right here, 126,000 tons. That's it. And then right here, then you times that by 52, all 52 universes, you would get 6.5 million tons-ish. This is technically what they were trying to lift, according to the writers. Here's one thing you have to realize. The writers, uh, Siegel, obviously, and Toriyama, they have no idea what the hell they're writing when they write. They just go, oh, Goku could just fart and blow up a planet one day, and then the next day he gets burnt by taking a hot bath because Chi-Chi let the water run too hot. You see what I mean? But, like, and then the next episode he's swimming through lava. Like, they counterdict themselves because they don't pay attention as much as us, the viewers and fans, do. But when us get involved, we need to include all of that, what we've seen then, right? It would be fair only if you include the greatest thing you've ever seen each of them do in their canon perspective. So that's why I am making this video just to show you guys exactly what I'm trying to explain because everybody gets offended or, or defensive towards it. It's like, no, I, all I'm saying is, is when Death Battle makes a video, they gotta be fair about it. If you're gonna use the most craziest shit Superman's done, then use the most craziest shit Goku has done. And I just showed you right there, as far as a strength feat for sure, the craziest shit I've ever seen him do. And remember, that was in Dragon Ball Z, okay? He's become a god since then. So his power is amplified way, 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 way more than that that clip I showed you. That's er, like that's like DBZ wasn't even close to being over yet, and Goku got way stronger, and that was his base form. Okay, so let's go to this. I digress. So let's just say, yeah, like here's back to Superman. If we say there are a million copies of every book ever published, blah 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 blah, and here's what it would truly would be right here. He be lifting and failed, by the way, without Shazam's help, 5.9 trillion tons. That's actually what he would be lifting with Shazam if every book had duplicate copies shoved into this book. Now, that doesn't make sense that a book of infinite pages would have that. Every, like, solo issue. So, Sports Illustrated, one through whatever million copy they have, that all gets shoved in there. But not if the book published a million, over one million copies sold. No, that doesn't get shoved into the book. Realistically, it would just be one copy of every book it doesn't make any sense that it literally would dupe itself over and over but i put the math in there just to be safe and fair so with that being said right there this is actually what the weight of the book actually would be not infinite i wish they would use that to measure it out you guys right now could take the four minutes i just said and is that better than goku's the one i just showed you or not Okay, but I can tell you, Mount Giza, how many teaspoons would it take, you think, to, to actually fill that 9x9 nine nine cube? I guarantee the stats would be way more impressive than this right here. Okay, also, let's talk about speed for Superman. It's been clearly proven, and I've read some articles about it, and I'm going to stick to this one just because I feel that this one is a good representation. So, 
when you look at Wonder Woman and Superman, they've had this debate, and it's been proven that Wonder Woman is, in fact, a faster fighter than Superman. I'm not talking about just running to the finish line or flying who's faster. I'm talking about who can, in a combat scenario, when people are upside down and flying this and that and reflexes, Wonder Woman actually, in fact, destroys Superman in terms of reflexes. Superman has just got so much tanking ability that he can he can make up for his lack of skill just because he's just gifted with the with the overpowered body and, and situation of whatever he's up against for the most part. That's been proven in the comics, okay? And let's go to this. Who actually won a death battle between Rogue and Wonder Woman? Okay? I'm gonna play this. Boom! Now, you guys can obviously watch that if you want on your own time. Rogue versus Wonder Woman by death battle. But they clearly gave the battle to Rogue, saying that Rogue could easily wipe Wonder Woman. Now, you all mean to tell me that if that's the case, Rogue should be able to take Superman. Rogue should also be able to take Goku. Rogue should be able to take anybody then at that point. Because Wonder Woman easily can outmaneuver Superman, okay? Y'all might not think speed is a good feat. I'll tell you what. Me and you get into a fight. You can have a baseball bat, okay? A baseball bat has more superhuman strength in a sense, right? You hit me once with that bat over the head, what happens? I'm pretty much dead, okay? And I'll have a gun in my hand. And I will shoot the gun at you. Can you dodge the gun, yes or no? See, that's what, that's what the Flash is. That's what... Uh, Rogue or, or Wonder Woman's quick reflexes is that's what Goku would be. Goku fights upside down. He fights instant transmission. There's so many different fighting styles, and he's obviously expert trained in martial arts. I know Superman picked up some martial arts stuff too, which is good for him. But at the end of the day, the information that they gave was just it was incomplete. It was not done right. Okay, I truly want them to really re-release a video with the information I showed or other people that have shown clearly Goku's correct stats. And remember, my speed stat wasn't even correct. I just want to show you season two that they didn't use. And like I said, we're in DBZ Super where Goku's a god, okay? So I want to digress at this point because I'm blabbing off the mouth. I have nothing else more to say, but I will leave it at this. You guys let me know what you think, really who would win and why. And if you want to debunk my stuff, please feel free to do so. We will have a friendly adult-like debate or mature debate. I'll say it that way in case you guys aren't 18 or older. Whatever, right? Anyways, this is this from Drunk FX. And I'm out.